Hey guys, and welcome back to the Pokemon Fab Five. I am your host, Moonlight Swami, and today I'm bringing you guys week number two of the NPA for season number four. I'm actually facing Kyle before I face my week one opponent because of scheduling conflicts. So this is technically my first match with the team. Um, I'm really excited for it. He has a terrifying team. He has uh, Scizor, Moongus, Crodont, Mesprit, Cryagonal, Oracorio, Mega Diancie, Jolteon, Flygon, Embor, and Shuckle. While we have, if you haven't seen the team already, we have, of course, Mega Agron, Latios, Mimikyu, Licky Licky, Crocodile, Gorgeist, Feraligator, Infernape, and then we have other Pokemon like Venomoth, like Electabuzz, and like Rotom Fan. So today we are going to be bringing Mega Agron, Licky Licky, Crocodile, Gorgeist, Feraligator, and Infernape. And it's going to be a really fun match. Let me just tell Kyle that I'll be ready in a minute. Okay, so we are back. Sorry about that. I just had to uh, <laughs> get my friend code in order for Kyle. But let's run down the team real quick. It's going to be a really fun matchup. Um, we actually are not entirely prepared for um, only one Pokemon on his team, and that would be Emborg. Um, I'm making the hard play that we're not going to see Emborg, but if he does bring it, um, he could destroy like 90% of our team. So <laughs> keep that in mind. We start things off with our Phytinium Z Infernape, AKA Frost, after one of my assistant coaches in Frostfire. And this is a really fun set. It is Nasty Plot, Vacuum Wave, U-Turn, and Flamethrower. It is literally a max special attacking set we are 252 special attack, 252 timid nature, which is plus speed minus attack and 4 HP. The U-turn is great for pivot, um, but outside of that, vacuum wave is going to be really, really important. Based on this speed tier, we outspeed plus one Crawdont, which is really important um, because of Aqua Jet. We also um, just are overall very fast. Plus two special attack obviously will give us a lot of different options. Um, it'll make us able to most of the time one shot Amoongus, obviously one shot Scizor. Um, vacuum wave at plus two is really cool because I have the Phytinium Z, which obviously is the Fighting Z move. The really cool thing about it is that because it is such a drastic base power jump for vacuum wave, I believe Vacuum Wave jumps up to, uh, let me, let me just double check. I think it's 120 for this generation. No, it's just base power 100. Either way, it's still more than double, being it's base 40, and it's a priority move. Um, I can Oko Mega Diancy, I can Oko Flygon, I could Oko a variety of things using this Vacuum Wave specifically, which is really, really cool. Um, just with the Phytinium Z. Obviously, there are some counters to his team, but if we can basically use Infernape as a mid-game sweeper, then we can set up for Alligators our late-game sweeper. We'll get to that in a minute. Or right now. Here we have for Alligator. It is Sheer Force Life Orb. This thing is a threat. G2, our for Alligator for Gatorade. Um, 68 HP, 252 attack, and 188 speed with a Jolly Nature means that we will guarantee outspeed... Um, we will absolutely outspeed the Jolteon which was one of the bigger threats to the team at plus one. 
That was really the, the purpose of this set specifically, to make sure that I could outspeed it. Liquidation hits a, like a ton of bricks to most of his team. Um, Ice Punch is really powerful. Ice Punch at plus one can do 76 to 90% to a max bowl of Moongus, so if we chip it at all, um, it's going to be going down. Brick Break with no, um, no plus one does an 81 to 96 to Crawdon. Liquidation straight up Oko's Jolteon. Um, I mean, these are some just basic types of things. This is a really powerful Pokemon with Sheer Force, and Ice Punch is going to be great dealing with Flygon and things of that nature. Obviously, we won't outspeed Flygon if it is Choice Scarfed or if it is Dragon Dance, but either way, we can deal with it. Next up, we have Roll-Ups, which is our Licky Licky. It is Oblivious, which means that it can get off all of its beautiful, beautiful attacks. Um with Wish, Fire Blast, Heal Bell, and Body Slam. Body Slam is really just there to get some extra damage off, um, if need be. Um, the Fire Blast from Licky Licky will do 81 to 97.7% to non Berry Sizzle. It'll do between 32 and 38% to Amoongus, which is just valuable chip damage, um, if need be. The Wish is fantastic because we are 252 HP, 252 Calm Nature, um, which is actually lowering the uh, the attack, I don't know why I did that. I think I did that before we added Body Slam, which is obviously a little unfortunate. We'll have reduced power in the Body Slams, but regardless. Um, and by the way, to get this Licky Licky, it is from a New York City event from 2004, where a Lickitung was distributed with uh, Wish and Heal Bell. That's the only way you can get it. So if you're wondering how it got these moves, that's how. But regardless, a full 252 HP um, Licky Licky is going to do a ton for healing initiative and it can also dish out some damage and it is our cleric this week. It's our special defense wall with leftovers of course. Next up we have Optimus which is our Mega Agron. Stealth Rock, Heavy Slam, Super Power and Roar. If he's going after something that's trying to set up on us a little bit too much, maybe in a substitute, um, we have our ways to deal with it. Stealth Rock obviously is important. It is a filter Pokemon. It has sturdy prior to that, but 252 HP, 244 um, with a careful nature for special defense and 12 attack. Basically, um, we're using the natural bulk plus the special defense to really make this thing a super tank on both sides. Um, it can take hits pretty well. Um, one on one versus Jolteon, it would be really close. It could technically beat it. Um, if it's max HP, if Jolteon is Life Orb, which it, it would be close, but it can do that, which is really cool. Um, this can do 60 to 70% to Flygon with Heavy Slam, and because of its filter ability, if it's not at plus one and if it's not Life Orb, um, this could actually beat a Flygon one-on-one -on -one as well. Um, Super Power, one shots Crawdon, which actually would do more damage with um, crab hammer than it would with a superpower against us, which is interesting to note. And roar obviously is important as well. Then we have Jill O Lantern, the Gorgeist. And first off, Frisk is a perfect ability to have because it gives us the opportunity to scout out what items are on his Pokemon. Um, we are rocking Synthesis, Will O Wisp, Seed Bomb, and Flame Charge with the Colberberry. Colberberry is for, of course, the Trawdaunt for its knockoffs. And Jillo is really cool because it's 148 HP, um, 252 attack, and 122 uh, defense. It is a supersized pumpkin. And with this set, it does a lot. It does a lot. 95 to 95, uh, sorry, 75% chance to Oko Trawdaunt with this. And if Crawdon is not a plus one, it can do a remarkable ton of damage. Um, it, it, it can't even... I think it does like 60% max to Gorgeist with a knockoff. Um, obviously, Flame Charge is important. It does 45 to 54% to a Scizor. And it can do at least a decent amount of damage to an Amoongus if it needs to win one-on-one. -on -one. Um, plus it can send this up. Plus it has Will-O-Wisp to chip it down even more. But Jillo is a... Defensive wall, really powerful Pokemon for us, and it's gonna be really exciting to see what uh, what she can do. And lastly, we have Steve the Crocodile. Steve is 
Just a, a beautiful, beautiful Pokemon with Intimidate, Earthquake, Knockoff, Fire Fang, and Stealth Rock. 244 speed with 252 attack. This will also outspeed a plus two product with the, with the Choice Scarf if he feels that he needs to rely on Crab Hammer and not Aqua Jet. So that's pretty cool. Earthquake does a ton of damage to a lot of different things. Um, Fire Fang doesn't do a ton. It does 63 to 77% to the Scizor. Um, it can do at least decent damage to an Amoongus, but the better move is Earthquake against that. So that pretty much wraps things up for the team. Let's get into the battle with Kyle. I'll be right back. By the way, just as an aside as we are back, um, I made this layout by myself, but my friend Galactic Elliot actually sent me this little HP bar that is in the upper right-hand corner. Which is, uh... It helps. It helps a lot. It helps me get a gauge of what percentage I am doing on each attack. So, let's see. Normal rules. Always got to go with Guzma. You know what? I'm going to go with uh, Unova's Legend. Gonna go with the uh, with the Getsis theme. Let's see how that works out. But I'm ready. I hope you guys are as well. Make sure to drop a like if you are excited for NPA season number four. And let me know who is your favorite Pokemon from our team. As we made our predictions on the bottom, Crawdon, Amoongus, Scizor, uh, Mega Diancie, Jolteon, and Flygon. We'll see exactly who Kyle goes with. I'm so excited, this feeling never goes away. I have this intense nervousness in my gut from doing these battles. I love doing them. I love the strategy involved. I love the building. I stay up all night sometimes just thinking about it. Can't fall asleep because I'm too excited. This is, this is how it goes. So let's see what he brought. He brought... Oracorio, Crawdon, Amoongus, Flygon, and Scizor. So we got all of them except for the Jolteon. And he brought the Oracorio Fire, which was exactly what we expected would be the Oracorio form. I mean, look at this. Bam! Nailed it. Okay, so if I had to guess, he's going to lead with Flygon, and he's going to want to U-turn out. So, what I'm going to do is, I think I'm going to lead with Gorgeist and get a feel for his item. I think that's probably the best thing we can do. Um, we do have to be careful. Rocks are a definite possibility, and if that Mega Diancy evolves, then we're going to be in deep trouble because he can predict the rocks at some point, and that could really be uh, detrimental to us. Let me write his team down. Flagon. Auric. Oreo Amoongus Scizor Craw and Diancy. Let's get it going! Season number four of the NPA! Me versus my good friend Kyle A. We lead with Jillo. And he leads with so many styles, which is the Oricorio. Ooh, it's shiny. Beautiful. Okay, so I have to adjust this HP bar a little. Just a little. So I didn't see what item it had, because I wasn't paying attention. Um, but I'm going to switch into roll-ups here, I think. He might U-turn out, but... We'll see what he starts with. He goes for a Calm Mind, okay. 
This thing could be dangerous, um, setting up on us. It could for sure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for a body slam here. We are a special defense wall. Let me see what uh, Licky Licky could do against an Oricorio. Licky Licky versus Oricorio. Uh, fire one. Okay, body slam should do good damage to him. Paralysis would be nice as well, but this is clearly our special defense wall, and I'm going to continue adjusting this HP bar just a little bit. There we go. That should be good. So now you guys have a feel of what percentage he is at. Obviously, he's at max HP right now, but I did not pay attention to what the item was on the Oricorio. So I'm really, really silly. God, I love that. That bridge of just the the tempering down, it's so nice. Okay, so he switches out. What comes in? It's going to be Princess, which is the Diancy. Okay. Okay, so that doesn't do too much. Um I think we're going to go back into Jillo. I think he's probably going to come in, and I think he's going to set up some stealth rocks here. Um, let's see, what could Diancy do to Jill? Actually, what could it do to, uh, to Agron? I think that's the better question. Oh, it could do a lot to Jill. Um, we don't want to switch Agron into this thing so prematurely. Um, but we don't want this thing to set up. I think I'm going to go into Steve. And just get... We'll see what happens. Steve is not the most important Pokemon for us, but it can be a very useful Mon, nonetheless. Obviously, it's clear body. Mega Evolves. Let's see what he goes for. It wasn't an oversight that we didn't have an answer to this thing. As he goes for the Stealth Rock, okay. Hmm. Okay, so what percentage is he at? Uh, based on this, let's see, that'll be 75. So it did about 10%. Does that give us any insight into this specific set? Licky Licky. Versus regular Diancy before it mega evolves. 10%, okay. I'm going to make the prediction. I'm going to go for a knockoff here. I'm going to play this aggressively. He should know I'm scarfed based on the way I switched into this. Yeah. That was expected. Bug type Mega. Beautiful. That is Flygon, and we get to knock off its item. What is it? That did a lot of damage. It is Choice Scarfed. That is going to mean that we can take out this little bugger. Flygon. Choice Scarf. That did so much damage. That did 75%. Seventy-four, uh, about seventy percent. So let's see, no item. Okay, just gonna knock it off again. And Kruk is gonna take its first victim unless he switches into the Diancy.
That was a good prediction. We're playing the prediction game. And Flygon, which we were fearing with the Choice Scarf, means that now he really only has one thing on his team that can outspeed us, and that's Diancie. And it has to be max speed to outspeed our uh, Infernape. Is he going to sack off the Flygon and get a clean switch into something? I think that's a good question. But the other thing is that with the Oricorio, he's actually protecting. Nope, he's just going to sack it off. So down goes Flygon. Beautiful. Now he knows that... Um, now he absolutely knows that we are Choice Scarfed. There was speculation that we were Choice Scarf, but the fact is that because we just took out his Pokemon, uh, the Flygon, which is supposed to be naturally faster, that means that we are indeed Choice Scarfed, which I would assume would lead him to switch back into the Diancie. But, you know, we could see what, what happens here. That is a big first knockout for us. As that thing threatened Agron, it threatened Infernape. Um, one thing that I'm going to keep in mind here is Diancie, the all-out attacking Diancie, would destroy us with Moonblast. What would it do to Agron, you might ask? Well, Agron would not be very pleased taking a, uh, an Earth Power. It would do 42 to 50% if we're Mega Evolved as incomes always wet. This is another Pokemon that I am more than okay to just knock off. Um, let me see. Versus Crawdont. We'll get a gauge of what this thing is. Oh yeah. Um, Steve is important here. I do want to see Infernape. No, I don't, I don't want to risk that. We're going to switch out. We're going to go into Gorgeist here. We're going to Jillo. Go for a Dragon Dance. Let me see it. Mystic Water? What on earth? Water. Water type moves. Okay, so it doesn't have. Okay. Gorgeist versus this. It set up a sword stance. Mystic Water. We could out. We could live it. We could live it. I'm gonna seed bomb. One fifty seven puts us where? That puts us at eighty seven. It's not a guarantee. It's literally a split decision. If he KOs us, it'll be a about a mid roll. The fact that he doesn't have um whatchamacallit? That he goes for the knockoff. Come on, Gorgeist. Live it. Damn. That's unfortunate. That is really unfortunate. We're going to go into Optimus here. So, that is a, uh, we don't get a chance to use our really fun set of Gorgeist, but, you know, sometimes that happens. Uh, okay. So... Craw kills Gorgeist. That was a split, which is not unexpected. Um, how about versus Agron? This is an interesting one. Okay. So Crab Hammer can do a lot to us. We're going to Mega Evolve, and we're absolutely going to Superpower here. 
He's gonna stay in. <laughs> Crab Hammer comes out. Does a lot, but Superpower should take this thing out. Wow, so he does have some investment. That's fine, that's good to know. That's very good to know. Um, okay, so based on that damage, it did how much? It's under 25%, it's about 12%. So where would he have to be at to get that? He must not have any speed. Is he max HP? He could be. Could be max HP, max attack. Hmm. No, that, that's not possible. He's not max HP, max attack. No, he could be. Um... Just gonna click Stealth Rock. There's no point in going for anything else. Okay. So he's gonna take out Agron. Okay, so that's two of our Pokemon down, but this is the most dangerous Pokemon on his team. And I feel pretty comfortable. Let me see what Feraligator could do. Could it... Aqua Jet can't really touch it. Hmm. Is this the right time? If we take out Crawdon, there's nothing left on his team that can take a hit from us. He's, he's not going to do that. I'm going to go into Frost here, and I'm just going to take him out with a uh, Vacuum Wave. Just going to double check Vacuum Wave here. Want to make sure that priority is at plus one. Okay. And Aqua Jet is too, right? Not not letting this ridiculousness happen. Okay. So we're going to go into Infernape. And we're just going to click Vacuum Wave. Okay. That takes out Crawdon. Okay, perfect. So that was a Mon that we were deathly afraid of. Um, Oricorio is not faster, is it? No, not even close. Okay, perfect. So unless he goes into Mega Diancie here, we're going to U-turn. If he goes into Diancie, we're going to go into Steve. Oh. Okay, we're back. <laughs> um, Kyle disconnected, so we just had to remake this battle, which, yeah. So, annoying. That's an interesting switch in. That is an interesting, interesting switch in. Amoongus, what could it have to touch Infernape? Technically, it could put us to sleep, but a plus two 
wins us the game, doesn't it? Or very close. I don't want anything else to go to sleep. So I'm in a nasty plot here. Let's say he's max special defense. Well, I mean, if he's calm, he has a very slim chance to survive. But I'm gonna get a nasty plot. Oh! Oh! Oh no, Kyle! Oh no! Oh no! You did not just do that, Kyle! You did not just do that, my man! Tell me you did not just do that! I can't believe he just did that. I think that's, it's not game, but it's, it's game. Oh man. That thing's toast. Down goes Amoongus! So, if he goes into Mega Diancy, this is gonna be really cool. He would need a lot of HP to be able to survive this. Actually, he can't survive it. He would need to be max HP and max special defense to survive this. His best move is to go into Oracorio. But he might be fearing, oh, no, it's over. Rip the dream, Kyle. I love you, buddy. But it is time to Z-Power all out pummeling and end this game. What? Wait. Wait. So, 
I just made a terrible miscalculation. I thought Vacuum Wave, Z Vacuum Wave had priority. Yeah. Throw the moon at me. Eat it up, G2. Down goes Diancy. That is a terrible miscalculation on my part. We should still be able to win this, but my god, that hurts. We'll see how much this liquidation does. At 37 HP. Yeah, that does about as much as expected. He goes directly into Oricorio, though, which doesn't bother me. I can go into uh, Licky Licky. That pisses me off so much, man. Like, <sighs> what? That doesn't make any sense. Why wouldn't a priority move have a Z move that I don't know? I don't know what this thing can do to me, but... Roll-ups is gonna secure this game. Let's see, Z Hurricane, 44 to 52%. A paralysis on a body slam should do it. I wish we were uh, minus speed instead of what we are, but. Hmm. It would be sassy. Yeah, that would have been nice. But he could technically roost. Um, at plus one. 
Z Hurricane does a lot. I'm not sure we're going to be able to do enough to this thing. If we keep it, if we get it below half when it KOs us, we're okay. If not, we lose. That's really the, the simple fact of the matter. Here comes the supersonic sky strike. It does a lot. Body slam comes out. Paralysis helps. Revelation dance will kill us, but he has to roost. Well, that's game. Okay. So we survive. It's not the way I wanted it to go, but it worked out in the end, I guess. Based on that damage that Scizor took um, from Feraligator. At plus one. Let me see. Feraligator. At plus one. 73 to 86%. He probably has more bulk than what that would say. So, Kruk. Let's say it was 252. We'll get an idea of the item. Fire blasted out. U turn. Choice band? Oh, it doesn't even kill. Fruit roll ups! Let's go! Licky Licky with the victory, and we win 2 0. <whistles> licky Licky coming in so tricky, tricky. Coming up clutch. And we win in week number two, our first battle of the NPA, 2-0, thanks to Licky Licky with the paralysis, a little bit of hacks at the end, but Crocodile could have cleaned that game up anyway. Um, versus, yeah, 32 to 38% from a, uh, from a knockoff against that Scizor. So, let me just ask him. That was a really, really good game. Oh man, we did it. We did it, team. Let me see. Roll ups. He was at 66. That's 30%. U turn. So now he probably was uh, no attack investment. I don't know if he was leftovers, though. Well, thank you guys for watching. That was an extremely entertaining and fun battle, to say the least. I am Moonlight Swami for the Pokemon Fab Five, and your Colorado Rapidash are one and zero, oh, possibly two and zero, oh, possibly one and one. I don't know what happened in week number one yet, but we'll have that 
coming to you in the past, and we'll have week number three coming to you in the future. I'm Moonlight Swami, and I'll see you guys later. Peace!